I was arguing with one of my friends. This was one of the few friends who knew what I was going through, so they had an idea of what might happen when I left. They probably thought, oh no, he's really going to do it. I was about 10 to 15 feet away from the railroad track when I heard the train honk. I thought, damn, there goes my plan. Now I have to come up with something completely different. It felt like my friend had saved me. But in my mind, I was thinking, you just ruined my plan. I got into the car, and all I remember is them making a right turn. I glanced at my friend in the driver's seat and muttered under my breath, screw this. I opened the door, jumped out, and bam, my head hit the concrete. My name is Chris Batts. I'm from Antelope Valley, a couple of hours south of Los Angeles, California. According to my grandmother, when I was five, she told me my dad left because he didn't want a child. My mom gave birth to me, but after six months, she also decided she didn't want a child anymore. From what I heard, she was pursuing a modeling career, which got delayed because of the pregnancy. After six months, whether due to postpartum depression or something else, she threw me into a neighborhood dumpster across the street and left, likely to continue her modeling career. Luckily, a neighbor who was taking out their trash heard a baby crying. They picked me up and said, Oh my God, I know this baby. I know his mom. What is he doing in the trash? The neighbor took me in and called my grandmother, saying, I have your grandson, and I'm not letting him go until you come and get him. From that point on, my grandmother took care of me until I was about three and a half or four. However, my grandmother suffered a nervous breakdown and was hospitalized for a year. During that time, I stayed in several different homes, eventually ending up with the aunt my mother disliked the most. Unsurprisingly, it was a terrible household. They treated me horribly, which was ironic because we attended church every Sunday, and sometimes on Wednesdays. They acted so holy, yet they cherry-picked Bible verses to justify their actions. Like, spare the rod, spoil the child. They took that as permission to beat me whenever they wanted, believing it would secure their place in heaven. Back then, I would count the days I went without a beating. If I made it a week, that was an accomplishment. I often had bruises and marks, and teachers would ask if something was wrong at home. But I was too scared to tell the truth, fearing I'd get punished even more if I spoke up. Was I afraid of God? Absolutely. I was terrified. The way he was described to me, like someone who would punish me for eternity, left me in constant fear. My home life and my confusion about religion left me feeling completely lost. I felt like I had nothing, so I made the decision to raise myself. There was no one else to do it. I had to teach myself life lessons through observation and experience. By the age of 15, I felt like I was already an adult. I thought I knew everything about life. I stayed out as late as I wanted, came home whenever I felt like it, and as a result, fell behind in school. I remember sitting in the bleachers during graduation because I didn't graduate. After high school, I watched my friends progress in life while I stayed stagnant. They had people supporting them, helping them with their first cars, apartments, and jobs. I didn't. While they were buying homes, I was going to the county building, trying to get $200 a month and riding the bus with no change. I was too embarrassed to ask for help, which only deepened my depression. It felt like that depression I had as a child came rushing back. I was so numb from it all. I tried everything, pills, drinking every day, even prescription cough syrup. But I would eventually get bored of whatever I tried. I never had an addictive personality, just a constant desire to move on to something else. I had no one to count on, no family, no friends. I was too embarrassed to tell anyone I needed help. And my family? They didn't care about my future. Felt like no one did. So I thought, I'm done. I'm getting out of here. I went to the train station and began timing the trains. I watched them go by, taking note of the schedules. I planned to jump in front of one on a specific day and time. I didn't care what would happen. I just didn't want to be here anymore. While I was arguing with one of my friends, one of the only people who knew what I was going through, they somehow sensed what I was planning. I was about 10 to 15 feet from the railroad track when I heard the train's horn. Damn, there goes my plan. I thought again. But at that moment, I felt like my friend had come to save me. I got into the car, and out of nowhere, 
My mom called me. I thought, what timing? She hasn't called me in years. And now she's calling when I'm about to end my life. I hadn't spoken to her in so long that I couldn't even remember how long it had been. I thought maybe she was calling to apologize. Maybe this would change everything for me. But when I asked her how she got my number, she said, your grandma gave it to me. She said you were looking for me. I just called to tell you that I don't want you. You're not my son. And then she hung up. I looked at my phone and said, screw you. You never were my mom. I threw the phone out the window. After a few minutes, I looked at my friend in the driver's seat and mumbled, screw this. I opened the car door and jumped out. My head hit the concrete hard. As I lay there, I wasn't even sure if it hurt. I thought, maybe I'll just get up and go home. But something inside me kept saying, I wouldn't do that if I were you. I tried pulling myself up with all my strength, but I felt like something was pulling me back. I looked down and saw my body lying there. I thought, that's my body. No, it's just my mind playing tricks on me. I'll be fine. I took a few steps, but everything was in slow motion and the colors around me looked different. Then I felt this overwhelming sensation, stronger than anything I'd ever felt. I knew it was God. There was no mistaking it. Felt like being hit by lightning over and over with every thought I had. I had so many questions, but before I could ask them, they were answered. My first thought was, who are you? And then I heard, let me reintroduce myself. I am God. Yes, I am real and so are angels. They are a gift from me. When he asked if I wanted to meet them, I said no. I didn't believe in angels. I thought they were just for TV. Then, like a projector screen, I saw a series of images. A woman who looked like a prostitute, a man in a business suit with a briefcase, and a guy on a skateboard with a joint. For each of them, God said, I love them. He wanted me to understand that no matter how unworthy I felt, I was loved. He said, I will go to the ends of the earth so that everyone can be with me. I asked him, what am I supposed to do when I go back to earth? I don't want people to think I'm crazy. He simply said, go and tell everyone that I love them. I didn't see him, but I felt his presence so clearly. It felt like he knelt down, hugged me, and didn't want to let go. I didn't want to let go either. It was the most comforting hug I'd ever experienced. And for the first time, I felt genuinely cared for. Then I was in the air, surrounded by clouds and angels. There were two angels that stood out, and I felt like I had known them my entire life. One had a face that looked like a beetle, but I couldn't see it clearly because of the bright light shining down. The other one was more human, with curly brown hair, blue jeans, and a red flannel shirt with the sleeves rolled up. He reminded me of Dan Connor from Roseanne. They told me, you have so much to do for so many people. When I looked down, I saw my body lying there, my friend nearby, and ambulances on the scene. I felt an urgent need to return to Earth. The angel on my left was stern and asked, Are you sure you want to go back? He wasn't angry with me but frustrated with what I had gone through. This was my chance to say no, to leave everything behind, but something inside me told me I had to go back. In the blink of an eye, I woke up two days later in the hospital. The doctors called me a miracle, saying they didn't think I would make it. They told me I had hemorrhaged multiple times and had been gone. When I was discharged, I had to be wheeled out because I couldn't walk or talk. But as I looked up at the sky, I saw the mountains, the sun, the horizon. Everything looked perfect but different. I knew then that there was a loving and caring God who didn't judge us. From that moment on, I never feared death again. My whole perspective changed. I started searching for the truth about religion, the Bible, and the books that didn't make it into the Bible. I wanted to understand everything. I changed my career too. I had been doing hard labor and working retail, but I started working with special needs kids because I felt like they were closer to God. While they might lack certain life skills, spiritually, they were so connected. I wanted to be around that. Suicide is real, and many people don't get a second chance like I did. If I hadn't had that experience, I would have been just another lost soul. I got lucky, and now I want to tell people who are suicidal that God loves them, and that someone in this world loves them too. You just have to speak up. There's always someone who will help you, 
even if you're too embarrassed to admit you need help. If you're struggling, don't be embarrassed. The situation you're in doesn't define you. Change the way you think about yourself and you can change your life. I believe the purpose of life is to learn and experience, to make mistakes and grow from them. When we move on to the next part of our soul's journey, we'll carry the lessons we've learned with us, and our souls will be better for it. Kindly like this video so that my testimony can reach the lives of those who need it the most. Also, put a red heart in the comments section if my testimony has somehow touched your life. I will be reading the comments. God bless you all.